Can you believe this Tesla owner's car died just short of the charger and when he was given no help on his Model 3 started laying down in front of a spot to make sure nobody else pulled into it. And we're back with another video today. We're going to talk about my Cybertruck order. In 2020, I put an order in. I was under the influence of three incredible Grey Goose martinis with blue cheese olives in them. And I was feeling good in South Coast Plaza here in Newport Beach, California with my wife doing some shopping and walked by the Tesla store and while I was inside a, I don't know what it was, Model 3, playing the little uh, Super Mario Kart type game they have in there and getting in trouble because the front wheels were squeaking in the in the showroom, I got, I got talked into, okay, I'm going to admit it, I talked myself into swiping my card and putting a $100 deposit down for a Cybertruck. And this was pretty early in after the announcement, which meant I'd get my allocation for that truck early. And I did. And about a week and a half, two weeks ago, I got the notification from Tesla that I was able to go in and order my truck now. And now they opened it up to where I can order the Cyber Beast or the regular Cyber Truck. And the great thing about it, in their opinion, was I get to buy this thing and I get to get the Foundation Series. I, I'm so early in that I'm going to get the benefit of having the foundation series. Well, here's the deal. I turned it down. I decided not to. I canceled the order. I'm not getting my Cybertruck. I'm not doing it. And I mentioned this in another video, and many of you were very happy about this. I did put it on Instagram too, and it was almost like 50-50 people wanting me to do it and pe versus people not wanting me to do it. And I think that the people who wanted me to do it wanted to see me writhing in pain after doing it because of all the issues that I would be signing up for in exchange for this expensive price. So I wrote down the four reasons and really how I handle everything in my life is I'm looking at pros and cons. What's the, the good? Does it outweigh the bad? You know, is the opportunity outweigh the risk? And in this situation, no matter what I did, no matter how I did it, I even reached out to a dealership friend of mine who was buying these things for pretty high prices and turning them. I even thought, okay, I'll buy the damn thing and I'll just, I'll turn it. I'll get some content out of it for a month or two, put some miles on it. If it turns into a content machine, then I'll keep it while it's still making content. But if it doesn't, in my world, if it doesn't get views, it doesn't stay in my garage. If it doesn't serve a purpose, it doesn't stay in my garage. If it's not something that I absolutely love and enjoy and like just obsessed with, then it's not gonna stay in my garage. So bottom line is, I backed out. I put together the, the four reasons that I came up with why I'm not doing it. And the first one is the depreciation that's taking place. These things are falling like rocks. The values are crashing faster than demon prices. I'm kidding, demon owners. God, you guys have no sense of humor with my other videos. But anyways, the prices are falling like crazy. Just like literally a month ago, these things were sitting up there at $180,000, $190,000. And two months ago, they were $200,000, $250,000. The cyber truck market is cooked. I feel bad for any dealership or anybody that paid over $180,000 for these cars a month ago. On the secondary market, and regardless of Elon's threats of suing people, if they didn't, didn't keep them for a certain period of time and all that stuff, they were still out there. People were rolling the dice and flipping these things. And then literally so many of these things started getting built that the price started to fall because exactly what has happened with the demon with so many flippers out there so many speculators out there there's too many of them for sale and that's going to affect the pricing and there's too many of them for sale at too high of prices which which builds the days on the market and shows that the demand's not there which hurts prices even more than if they dropped the prices a little bit and moved them faster they would still look like a hot commodity so while i'm looking at this i talked to this dealer friend of mine he says don't you are catching a falling knife. It's too much of a risk. You're going to drop to $110,000 unless you buy the Cyber Beast, and it'll be more, on this truck with a $20,000 markup. And I'm like, yeah, you're exactly right. The Foundation Series bump in price is $20,000, but you get the full self-driving, including that and a list of other stuff, 
but it's not other stuff that's worth anything. Some badging, some etching, like that's it. And then you get the self-driving, but the self-driving doesn't even work. So I don't know what you're really getting, but they're very clear about this, that the next, the next version next year, once the foundation series orders are all done, are going to drop by $20,000, which means they're going to drop to $79,000. So why in the hell would anyone with a brain in their head buy something where the company itself is saying, not only are we going to drop the price $20,000, but we're probably going to have worked through all the bugs, probably made improvements on the thing, and it's going to be a better, probably a better product by the time that comes. So if you really have to have one, why not just wait? Well, Brad, because I won't be on the list. Trust me when I tell you, this Cybertruck thing is going to be, it already is a pretty big flop. And so many are going to be for sale for so cheap. They're already coming up in the low hundreds for sale and not selling. Meaning if you buy one for a sticker, you may get out of it at your sticker right now, but most likely not because so many other people like me are backing out. For that reason, I'm not buying a truck that has a $20,000 markup for some etching and some self-driving that you can't get that is having all kinds of issues. Just knowing that there's going to be the next iteration come out just in the next six months where you're going to get the car, get the Cybertruck for 20 grand less. Which leads me to my second reason, which is the quality, the reliability of that thing. There's too many people having too many issues with these things. Here I am again, another problem with the Cybertruck. I really thought the Cybertruck couldn't get any worse, but it keeps managing to get worse somehow. A new Cybertruck owner found that their tonneau cover opened itself overnight, and then the front trunk opened itself, and now the physical controls don't work at all. This wedged itself right there. Um, it held the accelerator down 100%. And I, I, I don't think it's any different than any other car, but when you make something so, so outrageous, you're gonna deal with the first generation issues. Brad, it's gonna be mostly software stuff. No, panel gaps, actual mechanical issues, actual physical issues, actual plastic falling from the ceiling. All these issues that people have been dealing with are issues you're gonna have to deal with. These are all issues that are happening in that first iteration. Now, Tesla's gonna learn from that and they're gonna improve. And then the second generation of these things next year are gonna come out $20,000 less and be better, better cars better reliability they're gonna work through every single problem and if you want to buy the self-driving it's like eight thousand dollars more it's not twenty thousand dollars more and if I want to I can go to Home Depot and buy a little etcher and etch foundation series in my car but I think that's going to depreciate the car even more because nobody's gonna want the foundation series they're gonna want the better one so for the reliability issues I don't need to spend a hundred thousand dollars to get brain damage I can go buy a whole bunch of other things for $110,000 out the door that will be much, much more reliable and do more stuff. Which leads me to number three, which is it's not a good truck. It's not a great truck. And I've been watching lots of videos because I wanted to vet this decision really well. And what I keep finding out is it is not a good truck. We have another Cybertruck that has attempted to go off-road and completely failed the assignment. The best part is the Cybertruck got humbled by a vehicle you might not expect. In this case, they still couldn't clear the obstacle. And a Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness cleared the obstacle with zero problems. This so you've got just around 300 miles of range on a stocked Cybertruck, not towing anything, not having anything in it, not having me in it, not having three other people in it, not hauling things in the bed, and not towing anything. The second you start hauling stuff and towing something, even though it can tow an amazing, what, 11,000 pounds or so, it can only do that for a little while. So it takes the 300 miles of range. If it's cold weather, I'm reading, it can drop your range as far as down to a third. So down to around 90 miles. But on average, what I'm reading is you're looking at at least a 50% decline in your range. So that means your cut down to 120 to 150 miles in optimal conditions, towing something behind that. 
Well, my wife and I have been talking about the possibility of doing even more torture to ourselves and buying a ski boat because my wife loves to water ski and I enjoy being on the water and it would be a fun thing. Although I've owned multiple boats and learned my lessons, I don't want to ever do it again, but it was before I was married and I think my wife is going to want to drag me back into that torturous experience and I may do it. Why? Because I love my wife and I love buying cool stuff and I think it'd be fun to go out on the lake or in the ocean sometimes, but I know I'm gonna regret it like minutes after I do it. That's a whole nother video, but if we do that, I need to tow it behind something. Well, the good news is if we get a small enough boat, we can tow it behind our Land Rover. So we don't necessarily need a truck for that, but a truck would be nice because it's a lot easier to haul other toys in the truck where the Land Rover is very difficult. Well, plus the Land Rover's a lease, so we don't want to pump tons and tons of miles on that thing because we know we have to turn it in because it's already been in the shop like four times and they can't figure out what the hell's wrong with it this last time. We've only had the thing three months. So it's not the greatest thing to take on trips either. So I'd like to have a truck for that. This truck won't work as a truck because it's gonna cut my range in half and I'm gonna have to find charging stations. Now here's the fun part. To find a charging station while you're towing a boat behind that cyber truck means you will have to very likely detach the boat park the boat in the parking lot somewhere, and then go back the Cybertruck into the charging station, charge it, go back, and hook the boat back up, and then go again. That's, that's a nightmare. Give me a break. In a gas station, I roll myself in, and I fill it up. So here's the deal. For about half the money, I can go get a really nice F-150, tow the same amount of weight, and haul tons of stuff in the back of it, and carry everybody I need to carry in it, or for over $100,000, I can go buy a TRX, stop the gas station every 10 miles, but I can have a TRX for God's sake, which is a real truck. The whole idea of that slanted bed, not being able to reach over the back to grab things, get things, put things in there, you have to go in the back, roll up the, the cover, the Tona cover, and then put stuff in there, and then roll that Tona cover back down, or roll it back up, and go, everything loads from the back. You're not loading from the side on that thing. It's not built like, it's not really, it's not a great truck. So if I'm gonna buy a truck to do truck things, then I want, probably get an F-150 or a Ram. Who knows if I wanna deal with the Ram, the, the Dodge dealers again. But nonetheless, it's just not a good truck. So it's a car with a bed in the back for you to carry some some fishing poles maybe, but you're not carrying a whole bunch of, whole bunch of stuff because you're just going to crush your range either way. Next, number four, the douchiness. At this point, this truck has become a meme. Anyone who drives one gets made fun of. The Go to TikTok and type in Cybertruck. People are just ragging these people out. I mean, when they see one in the parking lot, the trash talking begins. It's hilarious. Now, I could take some trash talking. Hell, I'm a YouTuber and some of you are merciless in the comments. But I gotta tell you, to jump in to buy something that that makes me look like a gigantic douchebag and a guy that just bought something for one purpose, which is, hey everyone, look at me. Look at me, I have so much extra money, I could buy a giant refrigerator with some wheels on it, just to flex to you that I have more money than you and I have something that you don't have or can't have because you weren't on this list and it's got a foundation engraving. So for that reason, I just got to say, if I want to look like a douchebag, if I want to go drive around and be made fun of and have people stare at me, I already have a Lamborghini, I can go do that, and I know people talk trash when I'm driving that thing, but at least it's a Lamborghini, at least I can do 0 to 60 in 2.6 seconds and have my ears ringing because that V10 naturally aspirated beast of an engine is screaming behind me and I'm super low to the ground and it handles incredibly. It's got all wheel drive and it looks menacing. It looks incredible. It doesn't look like a refrigerator or a toaster. So if I want to look stupid, I'll just drive my Lamborghini. I don't need the Cybertruck because the Cybertruck sends a whole different message that I don't know if I want to sign up for that. As a matter of fact, I know I don't want to sign up for that. So another reason I absolutely have no desire to buy that truck. And then all the clowns on on TikTok that have been putting their appendages in the hood and chopping up carrots and vegetables. Frunk closes on things. Without further ado. And, and 
doing these videos, I mean, it makes them look so, so incredibly stupid. And they've created the meme. They've created the image of these owners. Short, I, like I would bet anything that we will never see the video for obvious reasons. But at some point, someone's, some guy you know is gonna put their freaking wiener into that freaking hood and chop it off. And we're gonna see the headlines and it's going to add to the meme about these insane, stupid trucks and the stupid people who have bought them and lost their ass in value, lost their ass with brain damage dealing with the repairs. So listen, if you've got a cyber truck, I'm not, you know, look, I get it. I, I, I ordered one, so I'm, I'm you, okay? I ordered one. So you can get mad at me for the things I just said, but I ordered one. So I'm kind of just as much of an idiot. I just am gonna stop myself, even though there's a part of me and I'm admitting it, there's a part of me that says, man, I would love to have that weird ass thing and how freaking crazy it would be because I think I'm weird and it would go good with me. I'd get a, a weird ass truck. I mean, I own a police car for God's sake. I mean, and a Lamborghini and this lime green. I mean, I'm not allergic to, to getting the attention, but even the cyber truck is just too much for me. So for those reasons, folks, I'm backing out. I'm not buying that Cybertruck. If you bought one, good for you, man. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you get use out of it. But I, I see it as a very useless thing and just nothing more than a flex. And look, I, I get it. You could say the same about my Lambo, but this is, I think this is very different. I think this is wildly different. At least I've got some heritage. At least I've got a car that's holding its value. If anything, I'll, you know, probably break even on that thing someday, if not make money on that car, because they do hold very, very well. But, and historically they do. It's not just like fictitious, like historically they do. But this thing, it's it's not, it's not. People are gonna get fleeced, they're gonna get creamed, and there's gonna be so many people buried in these things. So with that said, everybody, please like, subscribe, comment, let me know what you think. Did I make the right decision? And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Oh,